right, there we go. Um, let me just make sure that I'm actually live here. Just my mic just a bit. So that seems to be live. Yep, cool. All right, um, let me open my chat over here so that I can see your comments actually. And uh, quickly reload that. There we go. And I don't need a video preview. Cool. All right. Um, so hello everyone, and welcome to another live stream for uh, building products with JavaScript. And uh, today I want to do the setup for uh, Twitter Bootstrap, which is you know, quite a trivial one, and then to set up the Redux for our uh, front end thingy. So let's get down to business. Um, I would actually start with uh, Twitter Bootstrap and uh, you know, because once again, as I said, it's pretty trivial. Uh, if you don't know, Twitter Bootstrap is a CSS framework that is uh, very easy to use and basically has everything you need to make project look nice, even you know, if you don't really have anything, if you don't even know anything about CSS or how the uh, CSS frameworking works, although you should know at least the very basics. Um, it's kind of useful. But yeah, um, so let's do the bootstrap. The interesting thing here, or I guess um, maybe slightly disappointing thing, is the fact that the um, uh, maintainers of the bootstrap, for whatever reason, decided to uh, switch the bootstrap three to non maintained mod anymore and focus on bootstrap four from now on, which is still not released, which kind of does make a lot of sense to me. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and, and have a look at the um, uh, GitHub repo and see if we can actually grab the version four maybe and how good the docs are because you know, the documentation is actually the one of the most important things, especially for something like um, CSS framework, which you basically will be referring to docs all the time, right? Okay, so we got, okay, NPM still has 337 and there's uh, 40 alpha. Should we just go bleeding edge and do 40 alpha? I guess if we go to NPM JS package uh, bootstrap, let's have a look at that. Uh, that should be, so there's 14 releases. Can I see the versions? Uh, I cannot, right? That is that is a bit annoying. Okay. Um, 10 to 10, ah, that's fine. I mean, whatever, let's go with three and then just um, adjust when they release 4.0, if they release 4.0. So what I'm gonna do here first is obviously I'm gonna do yarn adds uh, or, I mean, the thing is, so if you are uh, tracking the JavaScript community, you will know by now that there is a new package manager, which is called yarn, which is actually pretty great because it's like 10 times faster than NPM. Um, and the thing is that we can use yarn because it has a lot of actually advantages, not just the speed itself, or we can uh, switch to using NPM, like keep with basically using NPM, which is everyone used to. Um, so the question is basically to you guys, uh, are you okay with me using yarn or do you want to use, um, keep using NPM? Just let me know in the chat and if no one replies, I'll stick with NPM, I think, because this is like the safest bet. But hey. Okay, while we are waiting, uh, let me go to get started and see our template. Uh, there should be a list of templates that we can just, yeah, there we go, basic template. Uh, no, that's not the basic template. We want something like this, right? Um, and we need to know, I want to view source. There we go. And uh, yeah, why not? Let's do that. Okay. Um, yarn is okay. So people, cool. People already use yarn. So why not? Let's, let's switch to it. I mean, the thing is that basically um, there was an article today, Yarn NPM, that I read actually. Yeah, there you go. There is an article already which compares uh, NPM uh, with Yarn and gives you a cheat sheet of all the mappings. And, you know, I think I like Yarn more because you don't have to write those like separate characters 
because I mean, mostly when you do npm install, you actually want to save it to your package JSON, right? Unless it's a global thing, then well, that's a different case. All right, uh, then let's go with yarn. So we're gonna yarn at Bootstrap, and uh, that's gonna install uh, Bootstrap uh, three three two, I think. What was the la la latest version? Three three seven. Okay. Um, so we are gonna do that, and uh, yes, yeah, you can see here now we have it in our dependencies. So what I'm gonna do next is I am going to import our Bootstrap CSS, uh, which is actually um, in uh, Bootstrap. So if you just import the Bootstrap here, that would refer to the package JSON, which would mean it will import the JavaScript, which we don't actually want because we won't be using. I don't think we're gonna be using any JavaScript from Bootstrap 3 because it's all based on jQuery, so that's not very helpful. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna say I wanna import this CSS and we're gonna import Bootstrap min CSS, right? So we're just gonna importing uh, styles. Let's do it this way. Uh, and uh, theoretically after I edit, so we don't really have anything here. I think do we need, uh, we need container, right? So that should be the top, uh, Last name container, so that should be the top level div, and we already have it in our app, which is nice. And then here we can um, we can use something like do 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 do. Let me think. There was this um, hero component, I think, uh, jumbotron. Yeah, exactly. So we can we can just go with uh, jumbotron over here. Last name Jumbotron, there we go. And uh, this should actually make our thing look uh, way nicer. So uh, yes, I've recently updated Node to what is 681 now, I think. So it's uh, a bit uh, fresher. Uh, that is that is my RabbitMQ. Which port am I serving again from? 3000, okay, cool. So let's, no, let's go to 3000. Thank you very much. There we go. So uh, we now have our uh, bootstrap configured embedded and you know we actually have styles and everything and I think unless there are any errors in the console we should be able to use all the fancy glyph icons and and all that kind of stuff so if we take what was the example with icons uh, yeah there we go no that's not the icon right but I mean hell we can we can try that anyway so we can take this button with a star and then just um, copy it, say, over here. And one of the issues with, uh, whoops, using Bootstrap with Re um, React is that you have to actually tweak class attribute to class name, which is a bit annoying, but you know, not completely terrible. Um, yeah, so empty component should be self closing. That's a good point. And uh, why don't you like button? Intendation of eight characters, but found 10 uh, because I went it a bit too far. There we go. So uh, theoretically this one. Yep. Yeah. So we can now use glyph icons and everything is uh, nicely loaded. Um, we are programming stuff. That's what's happening here. <laughs> in case you're wondering what that guy in Russian is asking over there. This is my stream where I program things. So if you came to look me at playing games, then well, that's not exactly the time for that. Okay, so we got that part working. Um, I'm gonna leave it like this, I think, so we don't really care about that. Let's commit this. Um, I'm gonna open another um, hyperterm shell. Uh, let's see, so I don't care. Do we wanna ignore yarn lock? And yarn lock actually locks the dependency versions, right? So the question is, do I wanna commit that to the repo or not? On one hand, that would allow for exactly same builds. On the other hand, it's kind of, it might be better to regenerate it, I guess, or not. I mean, I get why not? Let's, let's I guess, commit it for now because I'm not completely sure what the best practices would be. So let's do that. Um, git commit. So add Twitter bootstrap uh, styling. Cool, so we've added Bootstrap, that was the easy part. Now let's talk, um, that was the wrong button. Let's move it over here. Let's talk about Redux. So what is Redux? In case you don't know, this is the um, state management approach, I guess, to the um, managing states in, I mean, it started as a thing for React um, project specifically, but over time it evolved for something that actually can be used for anything and there's a lot of like derivatives now and a lot of libraries that 
use the approach as the core and try to do it in a less uh, boilerplate way or more dynamic way. Like I have one of those libraries because I got like terrified of the Redux um, boilerplate. But the thing is um, that like there are a few things that Redux does very well. Uh, one of them is the simplicity of the approach itself. And the other one is the ecosystem, which is absolutely incredible by now. So just to show you what Redux really is, um, it's quite simple. Yeah? So we have our uh, state thing, which is an object that stores our uh, values, right? So we have like full bar or whatever. So our state. I'll just like write the code here and then uh, remove it just to explain you what actually happening. Then the thing is that we have our application, which is actually a function that, that is rendered uh, out of uh, our state, right? So this is like HTML is the app function applied to our state. And then whatever you do to uh, change this, like you cannot access the state directly, it's immutable. So this is like one of the ideas of functional programming. So to change the state, you actually dispatch actions, right? So you can say dispatch uh, type, um, I don't know, change, right? So basically you dispatch some sort of action that is will be um, aggregated by the dispatcher, which again, this is like, this idea is coming from the Flux um, um, architecture introduced by Facebook. Uh, so the Facebook guys was basically um, pushing towards that one uh, direction changes when you cannot really change it, you know, upwards, like to no two way bindings and all this kind of stuff that usually mess up the huge applications. So the idea here is the same, but when you dispatch this, so you, you have a set of actions, action one, action two, action three and so forth, right? So you have this um, whatever set of actions that obviously change over time. But the thing is they are all in that array, so they are reproducible. So if you know in which order actions happen, you can actually reproduce the state at any point. Uh, and what you do is you reduce those actions. Uh, if you are not familiar with the reduce JavaScript uh, already reduced, basically then go read up on it on MDN. This is a very handy function. Again, something from the more of a functional programming land. What it does, it basically takes the whole array and does something to the values to reduce them to one value. So in this case, uh, we're gonna fit in the um, uh, function that will be applied to all of that. So which means that we have an arrow function over here the function, the function in this case will be we have our action, which will be action one, two, three, or so on. And then we have a result, right? And uh, the second primary reduce function takes is state. So we're going to start, uh, or sorry, the initial state. So we're going to start with our state. And uh, what this actually does, I actually don't even need the whole function here. So I can just do that. Uh, what it does, then it just says action applied on result. That's it. That's that's literally all the Redux is. So you can summarize it in one liner. Yeah. So it takes all your action, it reduces them and applies each action to result and then returns that as a state. That's it. And then everything else is basically sugar around that. Um, as I said, the one of the reasons why is it so awesome is because there is a huge ecosystem of various tools and helpers and libraries and middlewares and whatever, you know, already basically complete workflows for you to reuse, which is kind of great. And uh, another good point is that it scales very well. Uh, so uh, yeah, this will be uploaded to YouTube um, afterwards as I usually do. So no worries if you don't have time to watch this completely now and you just, or you wanna watch it on your own te uh, like tempo. I'm gonna be streaming for a couple of hours but sure, you can just watch it on YouTube later. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so coming back to Redux, um, they, they had a list of um, ecosystem. There we go. So this is all that is related to Redux. There is a ton of my middlewares that allow you to do like my favorite Redux observable probably, which allows everything to write into RxJS, which makes it like ton easier to handle like large and uh, dynamic uh, events. Uh, there is immutable stuff. There is Saga, which is also pretty cool. And um, I mean, there's a ton of things, enhancers, utilities. I think the uh, latest one that I've seen was this uh, Redux, I think it was Redux VCR. It had amazing UI. Um, 
Wait, I, I hope they have this GIF somewhere that I saw on a Twitter recently. Oh yeah, they do have it. This is the GIF. So basically the re, um, Redux VCR allows you to record whatever the changes happen during your application in Redux and then save it, export, import and replay it at any other browser and system, which is I think really, and look at this UI, this is just great. And you know, this, this kind of tools uh, are possible because of the simple nature of the Redux and you know, this kind of super stupid approach to it. Okay, um, but yeah, let's uh, start with actually plugging it in. So we actually need to do what? We need to add Redux and we need to add Redux um, React, or wait, was it React Redux? I always messed up, React Redux. So because the Redux itself, um, and I it didn't paste for some reason, okay. Um, Hyperterm, which is now actually Hyper, still has some very strange bugs with uh, pasting. They claimed to fix it in the last build, but uh, doesn't really seem so, at least not entirely. It's like from time to time, it's just like eh, a bit wonky. All right. So the, again, why do I need this React Redux is because Redux out of the box is a very stupid tool and uh, it doesn't actually works with React. So you can use it with um, vanilla JS, for example. There's a great example over here, counter vanilla, which we can take a look at. And as you can see here, uh, they use the render function, which basically just sets inner HTML and you know, it just gets, okay, store gets state to string and render it as inner HTML, that's it. You can use it with uh, pretty much any project and uh, this is really powerful basically. But uh, since we're using React, we actually want to use it with uh, React and we don't want to write all the connectors and everything ourselves because you know, that's kind of a bit of a pain and there's no reason to do that because there is already a project existing that will do that for us. So what we're gonna do is we install this React Redux um, and then we are gonna have a look at the components here. So the most, like all the components, uh, if you use Redux, most of your components should be dumb, it means that they shouldn't handle any state themselves at all. So it is actually recommended to write them in a functional manner. And uh, sometimes obviously you need state, uh, stateful components. Uh, for example, if you have like any toggleable elements that do not need to live in, uh, global state, for example, or you have any visibility filters or whatever, like location specific that uh, you do not need to store globally and that should reset upon reload, for example. Uh, but most of the time is basically recommended to actually use um, stateless component or functional components. So that's what we're gonna try to do. And then the important part for us is these container components. This is exactly what we want to do. So in this case, um, they define two functions. They define this get visible to do's, which we don't actually need. So basically they map the, um, this is the important function, right? So uh, first of all, we actually need to create a store here. So we're gonna create a store folder and we're gonna create the index.js over here. Uh, and um, we, I don't think they cover actually store creation over here. Yeah, it doesn't seem so. Okay, so we are going to start with the usage wizard. I think we're going to just go to examples. I mean, I don't feel like reading the whole manual again because I did that some time ago and it seems that it like became way better than it was. But um, React Worlds, okay, what is that? That seems to be, it's probably something really big and complex, right? Let's check that. So we got a store here and we got configure store uh, production. So what's the difference? I guess they include different middleware. Yeah, okay. So they use the uh, developer middleware basically for uh, for the development uh, version. And then they have two different files, which I mean, fine, why not? Okay, let's see if there's a simpler example, maybe to do with undo. To do, yeah, just to do should be fine, right? So is that React stuff? Yes, it is React. Okay, cool. I mean, let's go from top to bottom. So what we need, we need um, provider. So this is the one thing and this should be wrapping our app, right? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna import it over here um, and uh, we are going to use it to, come on, 
do that. And here we say provider. There we go. Cool. Do I have to? Yeah, I have to give it a store, right? So then I say store and then store. And this is the store that we are going to define. So we're going to import store from our store. And uh, yeah, this is what we have to define here. And then let's see how they do that. So where do they create store? Okay, so they just create it right there. And create store is basically Redux function, right? Right. Seems uh, straightforward so far. Yeah, as I said, like the only problem I had with Redux personally was the amount of boilerplate that you actually needed to write uh, at version 1.0 or, you know, like whatever the first like super promoted and public release was. Um, and uh, I guess we want to say export default store. All right. Um, and reducer comes from these reducers, uh, which should probably use combined reducers exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, so we need this combined reducers, which will go to the same import. Actually, we don't need another one. So this combined reducers is a hefty function just to basically, uh, you know, I did reduce over array of actions and this is what the reducers are basically actions. Uh, and uh, basically in order to uh, apply all of them, you have to do this combined reducers. So we to one reducer, which is, this is what we're gonna do and then um, what do we actually want to do with our store? So mm, let's see. Um, state action. Uh, let's let's let me think. So we already have a page where we say so. Yeah, we have this hello world thing, right? So what we are gonna do here, I guess, is let's let's actually change this to a status function that will return over just our basic uh, HTML and it will use, um, actually need that much uh, indent, right? Okay, so and we'll use props world, which means it will return whatever is passed in the props. So this is basically what the Redux um, guideline says to do, right? Okay, so the thing is that uh, in this case, we don't actually need reduce, uh, do we need reducers? Yeah, we can we can create some basic action here, right? So we need let's say um, hello world. Uh, it's gonna be a hello world reducer, right? So I'm just gonna write it for now in one file, and then later we're gonna change it uh, without um, like we change it to whatever basically we need to do. All right, let's see. So they are using case with a switch by action type here and. Um, so we have the old state and we have the new state and we apply this. So they apply this to do action, which is once again, basically maps the thing to new state. Uh, that seems a bit. So basically for every action I would need. Hello. So I need the hello world, which actually maps state and action to new state. And I need hello world reducer, which actually reduces the old state with this action to new state, which, oh God. Okay, yeah. now I remember why I didn't like um, Redux that much. Cause like the apps I was involved in was mostly like, yeah, let's just say not Facebook scale and not Netflix scale. So the UIs was uh, very, quite simple. I wouldn't say very simple, but quite simple. So, um, okay, we want that semicolon. Okay, let's see what we have here. Um, I actually want this add to do toggle to do. So we say hello and say goodbye, for example. Yeah, so in this case, I, I don't actually want Yeah, let's, let's just do one action. So we say hello world and then we do undefined Yes, uh, let's see switch. And then if it's hello, we are gonna say, uh, what do we use there? We use world, world is gonna be uh, world. 
that is done and then we don't need that and in default case we just return the state itself so okay um then it in that should be fine i think right i'm getting my doubts already um visibility filter that's something we don't care this is to do spec yeah one more cool thing about redux is that actually since you have those simple functions it's really easy to test them you basically just throw these functions into your test case and you know you can not even have to initialize your applications because you can just throw in a state and action and you know exactly how to test the result even if your um, reducers are asynchronous or whatever you can still test it reliably which is pretty cool in my opinion all right, so um, I don't care. I don't care about tests for now. Let me see. Um, yeah, so they basically do only that. And uh, we have actions. This is, yeah, so actions is another abstraction component which basically generates action. Uh, in our case, we are just gonna let's say um, export const hello world let's call it hello world action because why not and it's going to be type hello and actually we don't really need anything else here right so we only need that um, okay so we got that action uh, containers is our containers that actually should be connected to the store so this is exactly what we have to do here. Uh, so what do they do? They do define, okay, first define that const home uh, equals that. And then uh, we do connect home and we export default. Can I do that? Yes, I can, but it wants the connect, which is the part of React Redux, right? Okay. Um, but wait, shouldn't I provide actually something to connect function over here? I think when you pass it, you should give it the connection definition, right? Or if you just, okay, I guess it can be just empty. Then we'll just map everything to everything. It's something like this. I mean, let, let's try that. Why not? Uh, okay, so what's up with our application right now there are probably some errors can i read property uh right yeah okay i'm an idiot that's not how you define um props in uh world is missing and yeah okay the validation is missing that's fine there we go hello nothing okay and uh then we need a button that on click will actually um Click me. On click should dispatch. Uh, let's see where is our to do. There we go. So we need the dispatch. Dispatch and we need to dispatch our hello world action, right? So we need to import hello world action. And uh, I wonder if I should just export dispatch from this store. Oh no, it actually takes dispatch from the props. Okay, cool. That's actually, that, that's much better than the last time I tried it. So that is really great. Uh, dispatch and then world. So it's uh, just destruct that stuff. And that theoretically is a way don't you like my const, uh, what? Oh, right, um, yeah, import from, um, mm -hmm, that should be level higher store, right? So there's our action, prop validation missing. Yeah, that's fine, we can live without it for now. And uh, on click listeners, uh, yeah, oh, right, 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 right. Uh, there's been like in two weeks of traveling to project meetings, I literally forgot how to write JavaScript and uh, nothing happens which is a bit disappointing but let's try to um let's try to see so we got the create store root producer preload state so what we want to actually is add some um, development middleware right i guess to do mvc should have that somehow development middleware please i need to know 
how to do no this this the super simple examples right yep so it's, it's more or less the same um react war a real world so i guess yeah i mean this is the one that i have no it's not the one that, no yeah it is the one that i have open here okay so let's inspect this one um so configure store uh, we have the history here we have the root container um ta -da -da. okay let's start with the configure store uh configure store so this basically yeah so we are interested in the development only for now okay let's see apply middleware compose so we already do create store and uh we don't do compose why don't we do compose because we don't do apply middleware so and uh, okay so what is this dev tool stuff it is kind of amazing that you know on one hand you get this crazy um, redux uh tooling it's actually Chrome Web Apps, yeah, Chrome Web Store. And then there was a nice extension, if I remember correctly, for Redux. Uh, yeah, Redux DevTools, I think, is the one, right? So I'm gonna add that to my um, Chrome. And then I have to restart this thing. And I think I should have this Redux no store found make sure to follow the i guess it needs some middleware right uh yeah okay okay so i need to paste over this thing and so we got the reducer here and we got our tools okay so there we go cool actually see our store but obviously it is uh, empty Div state, so you can actually see the uh, completely empty store, which is you know this is like the kind of this kind of tooling is awesome, and including you know it actually includes the recording and then everything, and you can even do remote debugging, which is kind of amazing. So let's try to dispatch our uh, hello command and uh, commit. No, nothing actually happens. Okay, I guess I screwed some something up. So we do pass the reducer over here. We do combine reducers. This is slow world reducer. Um, let, let's have a look at the to do example again. Now, oh, man, this is <laughs> this is a bit tricky. Let's put it this way. Right. So we create store with reducers. Cool. We take those reducers here. We combine those reducers. So we import the default from to do invisibility. So let's let's look uh, let's look maybe at visibility it seems to be simpler so we get the default state here and then we get the action okay so we can actually we don't need that much uh, variables here so um, we can actually kick that one because we don't care about that right and uh, we can put that here and then this default state would be uh, worlds. Uh, click me maybe so basically that we see that there is some default state and then once it goes to hello we will change world to world and uh, let's actually see if our state there you go so we got that so it basically doesn't actually connect and okay state changes so we we now know that we got that uh, correct and this is actually really great that you know you can actually see that in DevTools which means we screwed up the um, connector somewhere. So now let's have a look again over here. So we got our containers, uh, which say, for example, filter link. Uh, here passes actually connect uh, those mapping things, right? So the question is, why the hell do I, do they not do this in, do they actually do that? Like in, in no, wait, where was I reading it? Yeah, I was reading it. Where did I copy this uh, Redux, React Redux stuff from? Okay, uh, let let's just let's just try to do that, right? So we got map state to props. In this case, uh, we just actually don't care about that. So we just uh, we can actually just return state, right? So because in our case we only have one prop. 
map state, which I, you know, I, it sounds like it's actually gonna be an uh, like thing that you don't want to do in a real application because that is gonna blow your props to the uh, incredible amounts. But hey, uh, for the purpose of figuring out how the hell does this works, uh, we can actually do that. So how do they actually do? Filter link, connect link, components. Okay, we gonna go to this components link over here. Components link and see how do they use. So they just use this on click function as is. Yeah, okay, so we are gonna do that and paste it here, which yeah, which actually looks way nicer than uh, just doing it in line. That's true. So like this sort of, I like this sort of uh, concern separation. Let's go this way. Um, so we're gonna do that. And uh, I mean, yeah, okay. Let's not do bad things from the start. So let's just do it properly and then state world, right? So that's what I want. Cool. Um, now let's see. Does that actually, no, it doesn't render uh, any errors, no errors at all, which is, uh, what am I missing here? So I map it to, so I map this, map this, I uh, call it connect on those two functions. And then I connect home and then I export this as the component, right? So filter link, do you have to do something else with this um, thing? app okay let's see where is this filter link used link no this is the component this is to do to do list this is still to do wait where is it actually used um, containers filter link so this is just wraps around link okay Add to do wraps around add to do visible to do list wraps around to do list. I imagine, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so how the hell does it used? Uh, okay, app is our entry point, right? So it should be somewhere in the app. Am I okay? So here, it's actually importing them from containers, and uh, yeah, I don't really see anything that differs from what I actually do, which is kind of kind of kind of weird. So why doesn't it actually maps uh, properties correctly? So when we wrap, I remember reading something about the um, react ruler that had problems with uh, redux. But I rem if, if, as far as I remember correctly, the way that they changed the API in react ruler for actually removed the need for this react ruler redux uh, wrapper thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. provider store let's see sync with store okay so this this thing i wonder if it's still valid for react redux uh sorry react router 4 let's have a look at the changes v4 prop types um redux is what we're interested in before we were method and props, uh, transition to, no, that doesn't seem before match using before with, yeah, there we go. Okay, that seems close enough. Uh, navigating outside of components. Uh, no, this, there's just, okay, your component dispatch. Yeah, that's, that's clear enough. No, that's not. I wonder if they have actually examples here. Maybe that will be good. Uh, so we this is not v4. We need v4 branch and uh, any examples. Maybe in the docs. No. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, they had the new website with the docs, right? Let's have a look at it. Um, the navigation. Blah blah blah. Examples, cool, router config, redirects here, and not really, oh man, this is why it sucks to using the old uh, or unreleased software, not old, uh, although old can be sometimes annoying. Okay, 
React Router uh, Redux, right? So we can try to plug this thing in and see if that actually works with uh, React Router 4. Although I remember reading that it, it's actually not really needed for uh, React Router 4.0, but hey, maybe something changed, uh, Redux. So we're gonna add that part and then uh, this is what we want. And we have to modify our render, right? So we are gonna do this part, React Router Reducer. So what do we do? We do, okay, this, we do this thing here. And uh, Router History, okay. I'm not sure that's gonna work because, so this is, this needs to be in the router, which is currently in the app. But the thing is, it uses browser router. So it just gets tricky. Okay, we have to really dig into the React um, router v4, right? Because it actually works differently. It uses different kind of history, I think, as well. Um, okay, docs here, v4. Let's see, what about Redux? We have a controlled router close to being published that makes Redux integration the same as uh, integrating input with Redux. Okay, so there is a control router thing that we want to use. Let's see if it's already published. It says it's close to get published. I guess it's not, which means we are kind of, it's kind of bonkers. Um, all right, that makes me very sad, but I guess it was my own fault for taking React Router 3 and trying to use that. Um, mm -hmm, basically two, but without any more application API. Uh, okay, um, yeah, I guess basically we have an option of going back to three now because it actually works with Redux. Alternative would be waiting for four to finish the um, controlled router. Let's actually have a look. Um, so they have, uh, yeah, it's 337 commits ahead of master. That's pretty nice. Okay, merge history, pum, 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 prevent merge pull request, version four. So this is the one that we're using and it was like 17 days ago. Uh, yeah. I wonder if it's actually in there already. Maybe it's just not, wait, where is actually all the, I guess in the modules, right? Yep, so there is no controlled router at all. Wait, what? But they said it's nearly finished, which makes me scratch my beard, I guess. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. So I guess our only option is really to go back to React Router 3, which kind of sucks, but hey, what can you actually do here? Okay, that makes me pretty sad, but I don't really wanna wait and depend basically on whenever they finish the... Um, the new version, so let's actually go ahead and uh, install React Router 3, which is kind of bonkers. Okay, um, wait, what was it? Yarn, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, yarn uninstall, yes, no unlink, remove. Uh, this is what I'm, gonna, yeah, yarn remove. React Router. There you go. So that theoretically should remove it from here as well. Cool. And then yar, yarn uh, add React Router. That makes me very sad, but hey, you know, this stuff happens. And uh, once again, this is what you get for trying out non-published versions. But well, we gave it our shot. I actually like the new API way more than the old one, but um, sadly it doesn't quite work yet with uh, stable technology, which is kind of expectable. Okay, um, so we got a new React or like the stable React router. Um, 2.8, wait, is it 2? Yeah, 2.8, wow, okay, cool. So let's actually see how do we use that because I already honestly forgot. Okay, and we need browser history, okay, cool. So let's do this and uh, this is what we need. So we use link, link is the same. I don't think they changed the API here. The only place we need to change it is over here. So router root link links is something I don't need. Cat stop mowing. No. No. Cat. 
What? What? Then my cat is unhappy about something, I'm not sure. So we say router and uh, history, um, browser history, right? There you go. And uh, okay, in this case, we don't actually need that container here. And uh, do, 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 let me think. So there, yeah, there we go. It's it's quite different and I like the new way a bit more, but hey, what can you do? And we actually cannot put that into the app because the app itself should be the wrapper. So um, let's create a new file, roots, roots.js. There we go. Um, uh, whoops, that's the wrong place to export. No, export default. Um, so this is going to be our roots array and then the app is going to be just the app and uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do, 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 can I actually do that? I should be, I am, I actually can just render the router as the top level component. Yeah, exactly. So we, we move that to our app. We, okay, we got the router here, browser history, so we can move that over here. Um, there we go. And then the roots is something that will go over here, but I, I don't think that matters for now. I mean, our app is not yet that big to split that, right? So we can for now just write it in line and then one, once the time comes, we basically change it to uh, whatever is needed. So, okay, uh, miss is not found. Uh, let me import this over here. So this is our packages. This is gonna be our pages. All right, this is gonna be not found. We got that. We are gonna have this. Uh, okay, I don't want you to be complete thing now. So gonna be other. It's gonna be uh, other, and this is gonna be, uh, how do you do the default path? I think you just don't, no, wait, you have to, path component, yeah, I mean, it basically just have to be home here, right? I think, no, okay, let me just quickly check because I forgot how you do that. Uh, project say shard should have that thing and uh, source client. I already did that and uh, every time I have to look that up again because ah, yeah, you have this index root thing, of course. Uh, I think it's still in the version two, right? Uh, guides. Did I use version three? I don't even remember. Index roots, yeah, yeah there we go. Okay, cool. We just use this index root. Perfect. Uh, and uh, index root is gonna be home exactly. And uh, t -t 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 -t, so this will go into our app. Uh, spacebar here, spacebar there. Um, and I need to import uh, index root over here. I uh, yes, you have to be the same level. Store is fine. Provider is something we don't need here anymore. So um, yeah, this is gonna be our uh, div class name container, right? And then uh, basically children over here. So theoretically, which means we can actually move all the Redux stuff over here, which will clean up the index quite a bit. We still need that here. We don't need the store here anymore. Okay, uh, yeah, that looks good. But then we need to go to React's, React Redux router thing. And uh, wait, where this one, right? Um, let's see, what do we need to do? First of all, we need to add this routing reducer to our store. So we go ahead and uh, do that and uh, to do that I need to import it over here I guess and I only need this reducer right so I don't care about that part and then here I don't need it and what I need to is I need to do this new history thing let's copy it with a comment uh, and uh, 
Oh, I do need a store here anyway. Okay, cool. So we need a store here anyway. And then this is the history that we actually use. Okay, um, that seems good enough. I mean, it get, it got compli like way more complicated than I hoped it would be, but hey, let's hope the um, React Router 4 releases soon so that we can actually use that new magical com co controlled router or whatever it was called so that we can integrate Redux as easy as with the input component, which would be quite nice. All right, um, store, uh, yeah, okay, you gotta go higher and uh, that should theoretically, um, I don't know, you did not resolve failed, no file or directory, React Router, um, I have to restart the build probably, right? Yep, there we go, okay. Okay, location change, uh, rooting world. Okay, so it does, okay, it does changes it, but it doesn't maps it again. So I am missing something once again, which annoys me to a great extent. Um, let's see. Um, so how do they do that? So we got this, oh wait, you write provider around the router. Okay, uh, that might be the problem. So we go back, we go to index, we go here. Uh, no, that is gotta be here. So all of this goes here and uh, that might be the case actually. So clean that, no, no, there we go. And then I don't need that part here and uh, I need to only import this part, right? So semicolon here. Come on, where's my data? Okay, so yes, we did that. We did all of that. That is good. Uh, reducers, yes, we have our reducers. Create store, combine reducer. Okay, let's just check this. Create store, combine reducers. Yes, we injected our devtool stuff. Great, uh, we got the sync. Um, okay, do they have example? Example basic, perfect. That's what we want, right? Okay. Um, let's check what they actually do. App. Okay, provider, div, router. Uh, they also installed the React Dev Tools right in line, but hey, we have the nice extension for that. I don't think they actually defer that much. Um, okay, that looks good so far. We have the instrumentation for store, which we don't use for now, reducers. Okay, and uh, let's have a look how the app looks. Maybe I'm missing something in the app itself. Okay, so they just div, right, and then children. Okay, more or less the same, right? Okay, and then home. Uh, Okay, there we go. So we connect it with the state map to number, state count number, and then we map increase, decrease, uh, which is actions. Okay. Um, let's check if we actually do the same. So connect, yeah. So we map state to world state. Yes, we do that. And then we map uh, dispatch to properties. So we return this on click thing. Actually, don't care about this on props here. Um, connect home, yes. And we export default, yes. That looks fine. So why exactly this doesn't functions as intended? Uh, chart elements. That is a very good question. Um, what am I missing? So it does navigate between the pages just fine and uh, it does dispatches the event just fine and handles it just fine because again, the state is changed. So the problem is in tying the state into the component. <laughs> okay, um, so containers, right? How do you even debug something like this? This is a bit 
Return, yeah, so you return that stuff, this patch had to do, yes, connect. Okay, they, here they don't even map anything, so I assume it just maps everything, maybe? Or maybe it doesn't map anything at all, which kind of doesn't make any sense, it should map something. All right, let me think. React Redux, right? Connect from it, yes, connect, okay, home. Um... So they use this home and then they use it in a ruler, which works just fine. Uh, number increase, decrease. What am I doing wrong? Maybe I children, yeah, if, I mean, that's what I do. Yes, children, just render that stuff with the styling and uh, here, okay, let's have a look at the app as well again uh, okay we did that we injected this routing and it works actually because we see the the routing events over there uh, in the redux dev tools we created the store with our reducer uh, we don't care about dev tools we synced the history so we wrapped it in provider store store we say that history is our new custom history we say that the component is app and then the uh, index root is home now the first question is, okay, I don't think I need this anymore. First question is, do they wrap up in the connect? No, they don't. Okay, so this is just the dummy wrapper. Now home is wrapped in the connect and we map the state to a state count number, which works fine. Um, so why the hell does it not works here? Uh, Another question, I use the index. Yeah, they also use index root here, right? What am I missing? Hmm. Yeah, so what, what am I, am I not seeing something? If anyone's watching and you can tell me what's wrong or maybe I'm just being dumbass and not noticing something obvious, then just go ahead and tell me. Um, it's probably something super stupid and I'm just missing like one tiny thing that should be in there. Um, okay, we got Redux, we got provider, uh, we got our store, which is create store export default store. We import, why exactly it doesn't connect it to the, I mean, let's, let's try actually, mm -hmm. so what I am curious about is stay to props. Is that, does that actually gets triggered at all? Like, yes, it does. And we have, oh, right, because it takes, I am an idiot, right, okay. This is what we want, right? There we go, oh, I, as I was saying, I'm a dumbass and uh, yeah, the solution is always like the, the stupidest, easiest thing you can think about and um, there we go. It finally works. Perfect. So this is the setup with the synchronous stuff and it finally works. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do a nice commit for all of that. Um, maybe I do a selective commit to replace router or no, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So I just git commit uh, basic React Redux, uh, Redux setup with React Redux. So I'm gonna just gonna do that. Okay, so the next part, like the Redux is very simple when it comes to the idea of how it works, but as you might have seen just now, the connecting it to the React app can be a bit fiddly. Let's call it this way. Um, another point that is a bit tricky, um, to use it with is the synchronous stuff because as you've seen those 
reducers right now, they return values. So basically, as soon as we hit something that actually does asynchronous work, we cannot really return it, right? So we need to return a promise or to trigger a callback or work you know, in any other way that is um, that works for asynchronous development. So this is why we are gonna go to the Redux um, documentation and see uh, if there's any actually recommended way of working with the sync now, because I, I remember there was like a bunch of um, tools to handle that. Uh, let me think. Let me think, where was the link? Oh, come on. Uh, no, that's, that's the videos, that's more what I want. Uh, builds, passing, change, log, am I again? I'm, I'm, I think I might be a bit, still a bit too tired after all the travel, so I'm not seeing obvious things and links. Yeah, this is just getting started with a re No, this is again the video, yes. By the way, if you wanna go like in depth on Redux, I do recommend this Egghead course from Dan, it's really great, so uh, do have a look at it. Okay, ecosystem, uh, middleware. So the easiest way for async creators, we have Thunk, we have Promise. Uh, I mean, as I already said, Observable is my favorite ones because uh, they use the RxJS, which allows you to do really cool things uh, with like async stuff. But um, that would basically mean I will have to introduce you to yet another concept but you know, why not? Uh, so th I think, you know, thank and promises and all that is great, but they are kind of boring. And since we are learning to do things, um, why not just go all out and have some fun? So let's, let's go with Redux Observable. So yarn add, come on, copy paste, do you work? There you go. So what is RxJS? Um, it is a library by Microsoft, which is called Reactive Extensions. Uh, JavaScript is uh, the uh, JavaScript version of it specifically, but there are actually ReactiveX exten like Reactive Extensions for just about any language out there. And I think the first one was like Java and .NET. And then there's like Scala, Closure, Swift, and I think you can find like most of them here, including like, you know, even PHP and, and Lua and whatever you can imagine. Uh, basically any language that has generics uh, can be, um, can have RxJS. And the idea is that you take a stream of events and you work with it as if it was an array distributed over time so that you can actually do all your synchronous work in sort of kind of synchronous manner. Um, let me think, uh, there was this missing introduction, introduction to RxJS or something among those lines. Oh yeah, the introduction to reactive programming you've been missing. Uh, this is a small gist written by Andre Staltz, who's an author of CycleJS, which is a uh, React-based framework, which is again, alternative to Redux uh, and actually borrows a lot of ideas from Redux, but is done purely on RxJS. And uh, he's, he's a pretty cool guy. And you know, he did a lot of really nice presentations and talks a lot about reactive programming and uh, RxJS specifically. Uh, I think not any anymore actually, because they've written a better, like faster, lighter library because Rx5 is still like under works. But he wrote this um, article, which is, really great and it's at explaining what is reactive programming and what the Redux is. Um, so yeah, you got this, um, how is it called? The, um, not a bubble diagram, like a timeline. Oh man, there was a proper name for that, but I always forgetting it. So basically the idea is that here, for example, is a click stream, yeah? So say this, every dot here is a user click. So the thing is that if we wrap it into uh, Rx, we can interact with it as if it was an array over time. So for example, we can throttle it to 250 milliseconds, which means it will take all the values that come closer than 250 milliseconds and group them together into one. Then we can map over it to get the length of the values in this case. And you can see it will change those two values into two, one value into one and three values into three. And then we can filter over it. And then we can basically, in the end, you can subscribe and get only values that come out. So like this one last stream, 
which is extremely powerful when you're working with any asynchronous code that requires continuous user interaction, like um, web sockets, any click events or press events, when you need cancellations, when you need streams that depend on each other, and a lot of other things that are really, really powerful. Like, um, I think, <laughs> like literally the most um, used example for showing off the um, RxJS is the auto completion stuff. Uh, so like this is the most famous, like if you search for any RxJS videos, especially from the Netflix guys or from the uh, Microsoft guys, from the creators of uh, Rx, one of the first examples you will actually find is the uh, example of how to build the um, um, uh, auto auto suggestion thing. I don't know if actually auto suggestion is here with uh, in this article. Ta -da -da. Okay, no, it's not here. So auto let, let me just show you because it, it's really suggest rxjs. It's like you know you, when you just imagine. Um, how much time it takes to build out a complete with pure JavaScript, be it promises or vanilla or callbacks or whatever. It's actually a lot of work because you know you have to handle cancellation, you have to debounce it, you have to handle the same value that comes in. So if you just like delete something and then quickly types it back, you don't need to re-request it, caching and all that stuff. And in RxJS, you can literally fit it into this like super tiny uh code that basically let's just have a look at this so we we create an observable from input key up we map it to target value which will uh, project it to the text from the input then we take all the text that is longer than two symbols we debounce it for 750 milliseconds to make sure that we don't request too frequently and then we wait until uh, basically it changes so if, it, if the same value comes in if the user like erased something then added something and it came out the same we won't do anything what we do now is one of the most powerful RxJS operators I know is flat map. Uh, okay, in this case, it's flat map lacist. What it does, it takes value and gives it to another function that produces another observable and then unwraps it. So basically, this search Wikipedia is a function that uh, does a request, uh, like Ajax request, and then returns a promise. And this will basically uh, give in a value wait for the promise to finish and give the value to the next listener. And the next listener is the subscriber, which will actually just render it on a screen. So and in this case, it just used the jQuery, as you can see. And this allows you like, this is basically how to complete in 50 lines of code with comments and everything. So try writing that in vanilla JS and see how long will it take you and how much pain you will have with things like debouncing, filtering and distinct until change. So that is, that can be very painful. Uh, but yeah, so, um, I've been using uh, Rx for quite some time and actually wrote the Rx state uh, replacement for uh, Redux because I thought like, okay, Redux has so much boilerplate, so I actually want something simpler and uh, for my use cases that work perfectly well. Um, the idea is really simple. So you have uh, create store um, and create action uh, methods basically create action will create a function that is also a stream so you can basically listen to it so in this case this is uh, your type ahead or auto completion example so as you can see here we do again we map to the value we filter for longer than three symbols we debounce for 300 seconds wait until it changed and here's another thing in redux you will notice that we'll be doing a lot of this dispatching dummy events that just or, i mean they're not exactly dummy but they are they don't have any payload meaningful payload they just say that okay, the status of something is changed, like we're loading, because you have to indicate asynchronous stuff, yeah? So in this case, I've uh, introduced this create status function, which uh, actually creates um, a function that you can use to indicate that you are doing something with the status. So we do this, okay, we do the status thing, and then we flat map it to a post request. And then once it's done, we just say, hey, we are done. And all I have to do after that is you have to subscribe to the store and handle your state, you know, when your React map or, or React app or whatever. And uh, triggering is as easy as just calling a function. Uh, I mean, it is opinionated. It is uses immutable JS, for example, which I uh, like. It does have a lot of like downsides again. So you like you don't you cannot really combine reducers or anything. You can just only flat map over 
to logic, which I mean, there's some places that can use some work, but uh, for my project that worked very well. So I um, think that using Redux Observable will be really cool. And uh, I will show you more of RxJS and uh, uh, probably it will come in handy once we switch to real time stuff and like real time question, like answering the questions in real time in WebSockets and all that kind of stuff. I know that we haven't actually written any code for uh, backend yet, but uh, we will do that eventually. And that's when Redux Observable will come in handy. Okay, so I installed it, cool. So now let's uh, see how you set up this stuff. Okay, uh, setting up middleware and epics. Do they have examples here? Because I'm not that much of a guy who would like look in the docs because I always understand better from the code than the like two pages of text. Okay, so we have all those epics and um, a basic example, there we go. So I, th I think we basically would need our XJS um, in our project as well. So I think this is still our XJS 4 as far as I remember because 5, five is coming for ages. It's been like coming from the beginning of a... Oh no, look, it's 5RC. Oh wow. Okay. Awesome. Since when did that happen? This is great. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my god, it's happening. <laughs> you cannot imagine how happy I am because our XJS 5 is like it been improved so much. They removed a lot of operators that like was uh, doing tons of different things and simplify things and sped up things. And the, the uh, stack traces are actually way easier to understand right now because four had this problem where you, when you try to stack trace over this asynchronous code, it was like very painful. In five, they fixed a lot of it. So it's way, way, way better. Okay, so um, let's have a look here. So we installed the RxJS. Uh, and I'm not even sure actually if we need it, but maybe we do for some later conversions. So, uh, view this demo. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the demo is what I want. No, that's, that is not, where's the rest of the code or is it really all I have to do? No, it, it doesn't maps to anything. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's not very helpful. Can I see the full example, please? Um, okay. Let's see here. So this is our thing. Okay. This is just the basic setup. Nothing fancy here. React router, what we just did, uh, configure store. So this is what we're interested in. Um, okay. So they have their own Epic middleware, uh, which is this one. So I guess we're introducing the Redux middlewares now. Uh, I mean, why not? Let's do that. So we are going to do this, uh, create Epic middleware. We are root epic. Okay, so and I guess we're basically going to replace all of this with uh, Redux epics. Okay, and uh, once create store, we do compose enhancers. Okay, and that's actually a nice trick. So uh, we are going to put that here. And uh, compose enhancers. And this goes as a second. Uh, Thing, right so yeah at least at least it seems so so apply middleware and up, I'm missing apply middleware uh, Ruler middleware browser I don't actually need that here anymore right so this seems to be uh, all so we can since we only have one middleware uh, apply middleware comes from uh, Redux itself okay so we're gonna need that and uh, we, yeah, you compose, compose is coming from Redux as well. Cool, so that's that's a nifty trick. So basically you, we either use the DevTools if available or we just use compose, which basically does nothing. Uh, but why do I have compose enhance? Oh yeah, because I override the, yeah, okay, cool. Um, cool, and then we need this root epic thing. Epics uh, index. So we have combined epics, which is great. Um, let's, I mean, let's let's do this. So we let root epic JS. So we do this combine epics and uh, export default combine epics, and then we're gonna combine our epics over here uh, and uh, say search users. So we are. No, we do need RxJS, cool, so that is needed anyway. I don't think we're gonna need 
so we, I'm gonna take this stuff away and uh, okay I'm guessing maybe I actually needed that because we don't really have reducers anymore right so root reducer is what uh, we do actually have to use both uh, search in flight true false okay that seems to be like yeah that that's just uh, users results that is just basically mapping to the uh, results right so I don't do we actually need that those are just the those basically those reducers just represent states and state switches and if I, and this is the user resets uh, yeah I think for now we can do without them mm, but since we do need some sort of a reducer, uh, let's let's create root reducer JS, okay. And uh, in this case, we are gonna combine reducers. Why is there just like root reducer? Yeah, so we, we can just do this. We don't need those for now. We can just do that, right? So, and then when I, we already have a nice code splitting here. So, which means uh, this is going to be a root reducer and uh, import from root reducer. There we go. And then import root epic from root epic. Uh, okay, I don't need that here anymore. And uh, we can, yeah, I mean, that's fine. So, npm packages our packages uh, is 10 t8 epic middleware middleware there we go pick debug or dummy enhancer create reducer and uh, finally create store right yeah, yarn is amazingly fast. I mean, I've been like, I've, as I said, I've been traveling for the past week, so I didn't really have time to change, check it there because we had like super crappy hotel with horrible Wi-Fi. But it basically the uh, install for the client here on NPM takes about 17 seconds and on yarn it takes like two with cash. Without cash, it was about 10. So it's like double, almost twice as fast. And then you get like log file, which makes your build reproducible, which is even better because NPM stream crap is not very reliable. And like, I mean, NPM in, in general, like NPM three in general is like eh, a bit dodgy. So yeah, I'm really happy that Yarn is uh, out there and have been developed. So it's, it's like, it's really great. Okay, uh, we don't, yeah, I guess we can just take Ajax here. Um, no, we don't really need Ajax for now. Okay, so let's see what actually happens here. Uh, so this is going to be const dummy. Uh, so we're going to hello world again. So we're going to do hello world world. There we go. Uh, and it's going to be an arrow function. So this uh, dollar notation is something that is kind of used in the uh, RxJS world to uh, denote the stream. So whenever you see a variable that ends on dollar, this is going to be an observable, which you can subscribe to a map over and so on and so forth. So basically doing uh, any actions. Okay. Um, in this case, they are doing some uh, filtering of type. So I guess we don't care about that. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take and map it to uh, world. And uh, then I'm gonna do switch map, which is I think the new flat map uh, because they renamed some of the uh, variables. Let me have a quick look. So we can have a look here. Uh, they have a good like the the one of the cool points about RxJS is that they always had amazing docs uh, and I don't know where they put them now is they still in doc folder great ah okay it's actually on the website now cool oh that's fancy all right uh, so we need what uh, we need yeah observable and I want to see the flat map or I think it's switch map now yeah I think they renamed it to switch map 
uh, switch map projects each source to an observable which is mirror yeah exactly so that's what we want so we're gonna debounce uh, like say one second and uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say uh, waiting I'm gonna say world here so basically what it's gonna do is gonna dispatch waiting first and then map it to uh, which I don't think is actually gonna work right because it's gonna be um, yeah it's gonna wait for the last value so that's not gonna work uh, world uh, I guess we have to kind of do this properly <laughs> otherwise that's not gonna happen okay uh, so let's see um, let's go back to epics no, no no I want epics thank you very much uh, fetch wrapper by users, yeah, whatever. So action types, this is one thing we need is to define action types. Okay, types JS. Um, let's have a look at how they actually, no, let's go forward and uh, action types, there we go. So they just use constants here. Okay, cool, action, uh, we're gonna define hello world action. Uh, hello world so it's gonna be just like one-to-one -one mapping just to use constant basically you know whenever you can evade uh, uh, magic strings because magic strings are really hard to debug and uh, navigate uh, it's better to use constant variables obviously um, so we're gonna import hello world from um, that's gonna be what no it's in this folder right action types yes and then off type hello world um, I guess yeah I guess actually their approach action types hello world there we go um, why don't you like it this way what do you action types as a name to export uh yeah okay um, all all as action yeah that that's what i want right and uh here i don't really care what i map to uh, no because we don't really have any value and i'm gonna concatenate it to one nice line and then we're gonna combine epics into hello world uh, so that theoretically okay i don't need that for now uh, let's move it over here I don't need Redux anymore as well, so we're only interested in, in the Redux uh, observable now. Okay, uh, let's see. So we do that, uh, index.js. So we combine epics, cool, we did that. Uh, let's see, index, no, we need configure store, right? So we got our epic, we create epic middleware, and we paste it in there, so in theory, um, I think I need to restart the build because I installed a new package, so it won't pick it up. There we go. Let's see. And uh, switch map is not a function. Uh, store does not have a valid reducer. Make sure the argument passed through. Okay, so do I need to have at least one reducer for this to work? Um, all right, let's let's check. So we got what we got reducers epics, uh, repos by user, for example, and uh, fetch repos by user. So okay, so this one is action payload action type. Okay, uh, I'm trying to grasp how that exactly connects together. Okay, user, uh, user results. I mean, this just gets the users, right? Initial state. Um, okay, let's let's try to const hello world. So this is gonna be our reducer. World waiting. I mean, let's extract it. Const. Uh, initial state let's extract it into a variable initial state and then action um, but in this case action payload user okay uh, but do they actually use payload here action payload user switch map save user props 
Okay, I'm not not sure I get how exactly they work. So wait, do I am I missing some part of the configuration here? Um okay, let's see what about the introduction guide basics. There you go, epics. I mean, epics is is quite seems to be quite clear, right? So is the core primitive? Yeah. So you have a function that takes in an action which is an observable and an optional store and produces another uh, observable action. All right, so this will be infinite loop. Yes, that makes sense. Basic example, action filter. Yeah, so we filter by type. This is what we need of uh, using the uh, of type, right? Uh, I think so, at least dispatch, yes. So that seems straightforward. Your reducers will receive the original ping action, then one second later receive pong action. Okay, so you have to dispatch another action for reducers to handle. Ah, I see, okay. So, which means that... Um, okay, I, now I get it. So basically, this will act as the thing that does requests or whatever the synchronous part and then reducer will basically handle saying, hey, uh, so, okay, switch, no, switch action case. Uh, so action types. So we're gonna star, we're gonna have hello world and we're gonna have hello world end, which will indicate that it actually ended, right? And um, we are going to say, okay, I'm going to import that thing here as well, all as action types from action types, yes. Action types, hello, if it's hello world, um, then we are going to return um, state, so wait, what did they, they actually use action payload? What was their action payload, whatever, right? So action payloads world. But in this case, uh, this is gonna be empty, right? Because it's gonna be dispatched by the app. So loading and uh, case action types, hello world and we're gonna return, uh, no, that's not state, that should be worlds. Uh, it's gonna be action payloads world, right? And again, default, we just return, return state, okay. Right, okay, now I think I'm finally getting how that stuff works. This is a bit fiddly to connect all of that. All right, so we got of this of type, uh, is that what they do here, right? Uh, epics, fetch by users of type action types, yes, map. Okay, we in our case, we just map it, switch map to timer, wait and uh, map. But actually have to, no, it's really in the payload, right? So there was this search users, let's have a look. Yeah, it just maps it to the user, so it doesn't, doesn't actually matter. It's always gonna come in the payload, I think. Okay, let's see if that actually works. No, it doesn't. Combine reducers complaints about something. Uh, store doesn't have a validity reducer. Combine reducers. Um, did I mess something up while moving parts around? Oh, right. Uh, I don't have to combine reducers. Right. I am being a dumbass. I just have to do that, right? Okay, uh, is not a function. Uh, root epics. Why is not a function? Function. Uh, so this thing is yeah. So it does this of type, and then I do combine epics. Okay, uh, let's try the example. They. Ha I mean, of type is not included in the new. Let's try doing filter. Is that is that something you would do? So filter action type, there we go. Is that what we want? 
No, filter is not a function. What is going on? Return. So what is this action right now? Actually, console log action. Right. Why will sh action uh, actions observable? Okay. So it's supposed to be observable. Why can't I? Am I missing some other setup steps that other XJS or something? Uh, okay, those are epics, and then this setting up middleware. Okay, combine epics. So yeah, basically you have one epic and one reducer for each of the things that you want to do, uh, which I guess makes sense, but still, you know, it's more boilerplate for Lords of Boilerplate, I guess. Um, doesn't really seem to be, okay, learned previously, yes. Dax matter, but, uh, da -da 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 -da. okay. Uh, do they have a setup guide where they show actually what do you need in project? FA troubleshooting, there we go. Uh, yeah, there we go, it's not a function. Um, import, okay, so I just need to import. All right, because the RxJS5 is modular. Uh, okay, so they don't import that automatically, so you can basically do that yourself, okay. Uh, which means we can just say uh, import switch map and we need to import uh, of hmm? absolute imports. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, of type, right? Stat. No, it cannot resolve that way. I mean, okay, can we just do it stupidly and uh, where's my index.js? Let's just uh, import our XJS over here. So that works. There we go. Reload that stuff and hey, it works. Waiting, click me. Uh, well, actually, ah, right. I, oh God, I killed the actions, right? Yeah, because I'm a dumbass. Um, da -da 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 -da, let me think. Um, yeah, so I don't care about this anymore. What I want is get diff. Sublime, where did I kill this action? Hello world action, yeah, there we go. So it was in the store index, right? Uh, which doesn't actually makes a lot of sense. So let's do actions JS over here and uh, do that, right? So uh, which means uh, I don't need combined reducers here as well. Where did I use it? I use it, yeah, here and uh, from action so no wait where is the source home app ah, store actions there we go and now that theoretically one second nothing happens <laughs> okay i guess i mean it's an hello right um oh right what I was saying about magic strings, they are bad. That's why I screwed everything up. By using magic strings, of course. Um, all as action types from action type, uh, uh, no, action types, please. And then we're gonna say action types and it's gonna be hello world. There we go, no more magic strings. Magic strings are bad. Okay, cool. Clicking, one second and uh, doesn't change again. Why it doesn't change again? Um, mm -hmm. Root reducer. Okay, let's see. So, what am I missing again? I uh, guess is it of type. Um, let's let's. I mean, you can we can do debugging, right? You can also log. So let's actually check that something comes into this uh, epic. And uh, object type, hello world. Yes, actions must be plain objects. Yes, custom there for sync actions. Um, okay, where this destination? Okay, I probably screwed some part up. 
Um, where does this come from? Create epic middleware. Actions must be plain objects. Use custom middleware for sync actions. Wait a second. Why doesn't it like? Hmm. That is a bit confusing. Uh, what was the troubleshoot thing? No, there is no mentions of this. Okay. Uh, right. So why? What is going on? Switch map. Oh, I guess maybe it's. Oh, it asks for. Um, it basically wants objects as an output always. Is that what you're saying? Let's see. No. Actions may not have an undefined type property. Um, oh, okay. Okay, yeah. So it wants always wants an object as an output. Okay, let me format that in a nice way. We got a timer. We can map over it. Map over it. Uh, so we close this one and this is going to be the map and then whip, this is going to be and then we get time. That's actually pretty cool that it enforces this sort of um, formatting oh, world end, right? So this is what we want to say and then we can kill this do here and uh, now Nothing happens. Why nothing happens? That is a very good question. Let's see our reducer. So, hello world loading. Um, why doesn't it actually? So this should be click me in there. But once I dispatch that, it should actually start loading, right? But it's. I mean, I know it does actually trigger. So wait, why does the text doesn't change? Okay, uh, let's have a look at the, let me refresh and let's have a look at the state. So at the state, um, has a click me thing, clicking it. And it doesn't change. Why it doesn't change? That is a very good question indeed. Um, see console log state action right so this we want to see now let's check this is like the last thing that we have to defeat so we got a need we got location change yeah then I'm clicking it we got hello world and uh, so why doesn't it return uh, Loading. World, click me. World, world. And we got the world. Okay, so that actually should be, or I guess we can uh, actually conform to the way that they do it and say payload world, right? Because this sort of makes a bit more sense. Now the question is why does it not update the state? So what am I missing? Do, 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 let me think. Uh, so we map it here to the thing. Let's see. So if I uh, again return, let's check what happens over here. Console log state. See and uh, hello world. Yes, click me. There we go. So that works fine first time, but it doesn't update this state at all. Let me just leave it for now. Um, why doesn't it update the state? Doesn't actually make sense to me. So we do the switch, right? So we did the same, exactly same. Let me just have a look at the diff again. I mean, I, I do pretty much the same thing as I did before, except I do this root reducer thing 
which has the root reducer and hello world reducer, yes. And I put this root reducer here and then I have the root epic here. Uh, okay, what am I missing? Action type, oh, I'm being a dumbass again. Right, of course, um, oh my God. Yeah, okay, that could have been easier. There we go. Finally, okay, so we can remove the logging uh, bonkers and uh, now we have actually the uh, sync workflow set up which we can do some uh, very nice things with and it's based on RxJS which will allow us in the long run to do some pretty nifty uh, real time works and I mean as you can see here it's really easy to like throttle this. Um, I don't know, we can like, easily change the timer values and you know it will be like it's pretty great. Okay, um, what I want, I want to maybe, 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 let me think, just say, wrap this in another diff and then say class name, button, button, uh, default. So that this actually looks a bit nicer. Yeah, there we go. Cool, so we've set up the, um, React, oh wait, Redux observable, not React, and uh, React with Redux. I think uh, you missed you missed my suffering with uh, Redux observable and React Redux in general. <laughs> so I've actually finished setting everything up, and I uh, think I'm gonna commit the code now. So git commit uh, setup Redux observable with basic hello world example. Um, so we have the example now, we have it set up, it, it works and okay, I mean, there, there's some ESLint errors here and there, but I think I'm gonna clean them up a bit later. Uh, but the thing is that I think the core is now ready for uh, development of the features so that we can actually write our uh, request to the backend, authentication, local storage usage for the, um, I don't know, auth token and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, basically the idea is then to have few more streams to finish the core application. Um, I guess there's gonna be like one simple stream to add like authentication and maybe set up fetching of the uh, list of um, questions. And then the other one for setting up the basic question, uh, creation, editing, answering, and so forth. Uh, and after that, I'm gonna do a video that's gonna wrap the whole front end development up. And after this, like wrapping up, we're gonna do the fun stuff like, you know, adding real time um, stuff via WebSockets. Uh, yes, I did switch to React Router 3 indeed because React Router 4 is not compatible with Redux yet and React Redux, uh, React Redux Router middleware thing doesn't work with version 4. So there was a painful decision. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's 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 why I did it. And uh, I mean, the React Router uh, 4 specifically mentions in the uh, description that they will release some super simple component that will make integration with Redux very easy, but it's not there yet. And like, I don't want to just wait until they release it. It's like, I mean, I don't think it's bad, but you know, once they release it, we can easily migrate to it because uh, it, it, like it had a simpler code than this. And the source code was uh, much nicer and had much less boilerplate because we didn't need to do this like React Router Redux uh, stuff and, you know, sync histories and everything. But hey, what can we do? We need to progress a bit. So I have did that. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for today. So if you have any questions, I will give you a couple of minutes to write them uh, down. I think I will just push, um, wait, what? Oh, okay, I have to update. Yeah, I think I merged some pull requests. Yeah, exactly, okay, cool. And um, then I can push it. There we go. So meanwhile, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in uh, chat. Uh, if you don't, well, I mean, or if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to write them uh, down on YouTube. 
Uh, Redux Observable uh, is the thing, since you missed that, uh, is the thing for handling asynchronous stuff. Uh, it is based on RxJS, and I think we're going to use RxJS pretty heavily during the real-time parts, uh, because like things like working with web sockets and everything else is very, very painful without observables. And like, believe me when I say painful, they are really painful. Or rather, observables make it so easy that after you try them, you will never want to go back to anything like callbacks or promises. I mean, promises don't really work for, um, for web sockets, for example, because promises can only uh, resolve into one value and, you know, the web socket can send multiple. So. Um, and I decided to introduce RxJS because why the hell not? We're learning stuff, right? And this is a very powerful tool. And if you know that, that will help you a lot. So um, uh, the, if you rewatch the video on YouTube, there was some uh, articles and uh, videos that I showed off from Netflix and uh, some other guys about RxJS that are really great. And if you're interested, go look them and uh, read about them. Uh, because they are really awesome. I mean, as I said, I've like this Eric state thingy that I wrote, uh, which basically replaces the whole Redux uh, in like few lines of code. Uh, just to reduce the boilerplate, this is again something I use in my projects, uh, is very, very powerful. And mostly I was able to achieve that simplicity because RxJS is great. Because, you know, I mean, uh, this allows you to do pretty much what RxJS allows, uh, maybe aside from the middleware stuff, which I, I'm still thinking on how to integrate it. Maybe I'll come up with a solution and it will be like Rx state 2.0 or something. Um, the thing is that the whole library is written in like, um, I don't know, like what is it? 35 lines of code here, 10 lines of code here, and eight lines, so it's like, 50, 60 lines of code, here you go, your Redux-based approach based on RxJS, basically. It's really great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not for, it's not basically usable for all things. So it's not like I, I had that problem. Like, I mean, I in general have the problem when I pick up a new fancy technology and then I just start throwing it at all the problems I have. Like, oh yeah, I know I can solve it with RxJS. That's a terrible way of doing things, not do that. Um, yeah, and uh, another um, thing you can have a look at is Cycle.js. Uh, this is, uh, again, from the same guy, Andres Tal's uh, sort of React, or it's not actually React anymore. It's more of like React-ish uh, virtual DOM-based framework based on RxJS, purely on RxJS, or observables now, I guess, because they actually went from Rix to this extreme alternative, with, uh, which is also like observable spec compiling and everything, uh, which is also pretty great. And it's a very interesting way to uh, think about your applications, you know, and sort of uh, that you have the uh, sort of this cyclable uh, things uh, and consider everything to be a function over something. Uh, I mean, basically, he has some interesting uh, lectures on that as well. So I would recommend looking that up. Okay, um, there seem to be no more questions here. Um, so I am gonna, I pushed everything, right? Yep, I did. Cool. So I'm, I think I'm gonna wrap this up here for today. Thank you for uh, watching the stream and staying uh, live. Um, again, it's gonna be on YouTube, so feel free to watch it or rewatch it there. Uh, feel free to ask questions on the YouTube comments or our Cosigator chat as well. So I'm gonna be uh, in there as much as I can. Uh, I don't seem to have any more like huge travels coming up soon or huge project deadlines um, that I will be like falling out of the doing those videos much more. So we should be able to finish within the next few months, at least the base of it. And then we can see what we do with like mobile apps and everything. But yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time, guys. Bye.